Welcome to our second lecture on trigonometry. The topic is trigonometric ratios for spatial angles. I remain your lecturer, Professor E.O. Efana. Spatial angles in the first quadrant. We know that a plane is usually divided into four quadrants as shown here. This is the first quadrant, second quadrant, third quadrant, and fourth quadrant. We also know that positive angles are usually measured in anti-clockwise direction. Thus, if a line segment is rotated in this direction, positive angle is formed. But if a line segment is rotated in this direction, negative angle is formed. Special angles in the first quadrant are 0 degrees, 30 degrees, 45 degrees, 60 degrees, and 90 degrees. First, let us see how we can obtain trick ratios for 0 degrees. We draw a right angle triangle in the first quadrant as follows. Let this angle be theta degrees. Clearly, for this angle to become 0 degrees, the opposite side here must be 0. The adjacent side and the hypotenuse side must be equal. So the opposite side is 0. Let the adjacent side be x and the hypotenuse side be x. We are now ready to obtain the trick ratios for 0 degrees. Sin 0 is opposite over hypotenuse. 0 over x is 0. Cos 0 is adjacent over hypotenuse x over x is 1 and tan 0 is opposite over adjacent 0 over x is 0 trigonometric ratios for 90 degrees to obtain trig ratios for 90 degrees we construct a right angle triangle in the first quadrant as follows Let this angle be theta degrees. Clearly, for this angle to become 90 degrees, the adjacent side must be 0. The opposite side must be the same thing as the hypotenuse side. So let the side be x. We can now obtain the trick ratios for 90 degrees. Sin 90 is opposite over hypotenuse. X over X is 1. Cos 90 is adjacent over hypotenuse. 0 over X is 0. And tan 90 is opposite over adjacent. X over 0 is infinity. Trigonometric ratios for 30 degrees and 60 degrees. To obtain the trig ratios for these two angles, we consider equilateral triangle of side 2 unit. We know that in equilateral triangle, each interior angle is 60 degrees. We then draw an altitude from this vertex to the opposite side. That altitude bisect the opposite side so that this side is 1 and this side is also 1. It also bisect the angle at the vertex here. This angle is 30, while this angle is 30. By Pythagoras theorem, we can find the length of the altitude. 2 squared minus 1 squared is 3. 
then the square root of that will give us this side this angle is 60 degrees why this angle is 30 degrees we can now find the trig ratios for the two angles for 30 degrees we have sine 30 is opposite over hypotenuse 1 over 2 that is half cos 30 is adjacent over hypotenuse root 3 over 2 and tan 30 is opposite over adjacent 1 all over root 3 sin 60 is opposite over hypotenuse that's root 3 over 2 cos 60 is adjacent over hypotenuse as 1 all over 2 and tan 60 is opposite over adjacent root 3 over 1 that is root 3 trigonometric ratios for 45 degrees to obtain the trig ratios for 45 degrees we consider a unit square that's a square of side 1 We know that the interior angle of a square, each interior angle of a square is 90 degrees. As each of this angle is 90 degrees. So if we draw a diagonal, the diagonal will bisect 90 degrees into 45, 45. So this angle is 45. Since this is a right angle triangle, this is the hypotenuse side. Then 1 squared plus 1 squared is 2. Then the square root of that will give us the length of the hypotenuse side. That is root 2. We can now obtain the trig ratio for 45 degrees. Sin 45 is opposite over hypotenuse. That's 1 all over root 2. Cos 45 is adjacent over hypotenuse. That's 1 all over root 2. And tan 45 is opposite over adjacent. 1 over 1, that is 1. Trigonometric ratios for angles in the second quadrant. Let theta be the angle in the second quadrant. Then, theta is greater than 90 degrees, but less than or equal to 180 degrees. Let us show this in a diagram. If we rotate a line segment from this point to second quadrant, we will obtain the angle theta in the second quadrant. Clearly, this angle is greater than 90, but it is less than 180. This other angle will be 180 minus theta. This angle is 180 minus theta. We then construct a right angle triangle on this side as the hypotenuse. So this triangle is a right angle triangle. In this triangle, the hypotenuse side always carries positive sign. While this side, which is parallel to the positive part of the y-axis, carries positive sign why this side is the negative sign so therefore to find the trig ratio for angle in the second quadrant is equivalent to finding the trig ratio for 180 minus theta using the fact that sine is opposite over hypotenuse that's plus over plus is plus and cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse minus over plus is minus while tangent is opposite over adjacent plus over minus is minus so sine theta is equal to plus sine 180 minus theta cos theta is minus cos 180 minus theta and tan theta is minus than 180 minus theta as we can see it is only sine that is positive in the second quadrant 
while cosine and tangent are negative. Special angles in the second quadrant. To obtain special angles in the second quadrant, we have to add 90 degrees to special angles in the first quadrant as follows. 90 plus 30 degrees is 120. 90 plus 45 degrees is 135. 90 plus 60 degrees is 150. And 90 plus 90 degrees is 180. So these are the special angles in the second quadrant. 120, 135, 150, and 180. Example 1. Let us find the trick ratio for 120 degrees. Sine 120 is equal to plus sine 180 minus 120. We recall it is only sine that is positive in the second quadrant. So this is equal to plus sine 60, which is equal to root 3 over 2. Cos 120 is equal to minus cos 180 minus 120. And that will give us minus cos 60, which is equal to minus half. Tan 120 is equal to minus tan 180 minus 120. And this is equal to minus tan 60. This is equal to minus root 3. Trigonometric ratios for angles in the third quadrant. Let theta be the angle in the third quadrant. Then, theta is greater than 180 degrees but less than or equal to 270 degrees. We illustrate this on the diagram as shown here. Rotate a line segment from this point to the third quadrant. Then the angle formed here, theta, is in the third quadrant. That angle is greater than 180 but less than 270. We obtain this angle by subtracting 180 degrees from theta. So this angle will be theta minus 180. To obtain the trig ratio, we have to construct a right angle triangle with this side as hypotenuse side. So we draw this perpendicular line. This is a right angle triangle. We know that in this right angle triangle, the hypotenuse side always carries positive sign. This side is opposite the negative part of the y-axis, so it will carry negative sign. While this side is negative. We are now ready to find the trig ratios for theta degrees which is equivalent to finding the trig ratio for theta minus 180 degrees using the fact that sine is opposite as minus over plus which is minus cos is adjacent over hypotenuse minus over plus is minus and tan is opposite over adjacent minus over minus is plus so it is only tan that is plus in the third quadrant. So we have sine theta is equal to minus sine theta minus 180. Cos theta is equal to minus cos theta minus 180. And tan theta is equal to plus tan theta minus 180. So we have seen that it is only tan that is positive in the third quadrant. Special angles in the third quadrant. To obtain special angles in the third quadrant, we add 180 degrees to special angles in the first quadrant. And these are 180 plus 30 degrees will give us 210. 180 plus 45 is 225. 180 plus 60 is 240. And 180 plus 90 is 270.
Example 2. Let us find the trig ratios for 210 degrees. Sine 210 is minus sine 210 minus 180. We recall that sine is negative in the third quadrant. And to find the trig ratio, we have to subtract 180 degrees from the given angle 210. So this will give us minus sine 30, which is equal to minus half. Cos 210. Cos is also negative in this quadrant, so that will give us minus cos 210 minus 180, which is equal to minus cos 30. And that will give us minus root 3 all over 2. Tan 210. It is only tan that is positive in this quadrant. So tan 210 is equal to plus tan 210 minus 180. This is equal to plus tan 30. And that will give us 1 all over root 3. Trigonometric ratios for angles in the fourth quadrant. Again, let theta be the angle in the fourth quadrant. Then, theta is greater than 270 degrees, but less than or equal to 360 degrees. Let us illustrate this on the following diagram. We rotate the line segment from this point to the fourth quadrant. So the angle form here is the angle in the fourth quadrant. To obtain the trig ratio for the angle in the fourth quadrant, we have to obtain this angle by subtracting the given angle theta from 360 degrees. We can then construct a right angle triangle with this side as the hypotenuse side. This is a right angle triangle. As usual, the hypotenuse side carries positive sign. Why this side, which is parallel to the negative part of the y-axis, carries negative side? Why this one is positive? So to find the trig ratio for theta is equivalent to finding the trig ratio for 360 minus theta. Using the fact that sine is negative in this quadrant. That's minus over plus. Cosine is positive, plus over plus, while tangent is negative, minus over plus. So, sine theta is therefore equal to minus sine 360 minus theta. Cos theta is equal to plus cos 360 minus theta, and tan theta is equal to minus tan 360 minus theta. So we observe that in the fourth quadrant, it is only cos that is positive. Special angles in the fourth quadrant. To obtain special angles in the fourth quadrant, we have to add 270 degrees to special angles in the first quadrant. And these are 270 plus 30 will give us 300 degrees. 270 plus 45 is 315. 270 plus 60 is 330. And 270 plus 90 is 360. Example 3. Let us find the trig ratios for 300 degrees. Sine 300 is equal to minus sine 360 minus 300. Please recall, sine and tangent are negative in this quadrant. It is only cosine that is positive. And to obtain the trig ratio, we have to subtract the given angle from 360. So sine 300 will give us minus sine 360 minus 300 which is equal to minus sine 60, and that is equal to minus root 3 over 2. Cos 300 is equal to plus cos 360 minus 300, which is equal to cos 60, and that is equal to half. And tan 300 is equal to minus tan 360 minus 300, and this is equal to minus tan 60, which is equal to minus root 3.
trigonometric ratios for angles greater than 360 degrees. For theta greater than 360 degrees, we divide theta by 360 to obtain a remainder. This remainder is what we call the basic angle of theta. Note that alpha is greater than or equal to 0 but less than 360. And sin theta is equal to sin alpha. Cos theta is equal to cos alpha. And tan theta is equal to tan alpha. Example 4. Without using calculator or tables, find the value of cos 1560 degrees. Solution. One thousand five hundred and sixty degrees is equal to three sixty times four plus one twenty. That's the basic angle of one thousand three hundred and sixty degrees is one hundred and twenty degrees. As upon dividing this by three sixty, the answer is four, and the remainder is one twenty. So therefore, the basic angles of one thousand five hundred and sixty is one twenty. And cos 1560 degrees is equal to cos 120. But 120 degrees is in the second quadrant. And cos is negative in that quadrant. So this will give us minus cos 60 degrees. We recall we have to subtract 120 degrees from 180. And minus cos 60 degrees is equal to minus half. Trigonometric ratios for negative angles. Without loss of generality, we assume that theta is acute. Then, minus theta is in the fourth quadrant. That is, minus theta is equal to 0 minus theta, which is equal to 360 minus theta. Which therefore implies that sine minus theta is equal to minus sine 360 minus theta. And this is equal to minus sine theta. Cos minus theta is equal to plus cos 360 minus theta. And this is equal to plus cos theta. And tan minus theta is equal to minus tan 360 minus theta. And this is equal to minus tan theta. So, sine minus theta is equal to minus sine theta. Cos minus theta is the same thing as cos theta. While tan minus theta is equal to minus tan theta. As explained earlier on, this angle is 0 degrees here and here is 360 degrees so this angle is minus theta we recall that when we rotate a line segment in a clockwise direction a negative angle is formed but when it is rotated in anti-clockwise direction positive angle is formed example 5 Without using calculator or tables, find the value of sine minus 780. Solution. We know that sine minus theta is equal to minus sine theta. So sine minus 780 is equal to minus sine 780. But 780 is greater than 360. So the basic angle of this 780 is 60 degrees. That's when you divide 780 by 360. The answer will be 2 and the remainder is 60. So minus sine 780 is equal to minus sine 60. And that is equal to 
minus root 3 all over 2. We have come to the end of our second lecture in this series. Thank you for watching and keep on watching.